Is there any way that I can get a link, that YouTube link? Uh, so, uh to like share with someone? <laughs> Dreaming is on.
Um, all right, well, it looks like we have everyone. So congratulations on finals to both of the teams. Um, my name is Katrina, I'm one of the judges. I think that the teams wanted us to quickly go over our judging philosophies. So um, if any of the other judges wanted to start, that's fine with me. Yeah, I can, I can talk about my philosophy. Um, Maybe my computer doesn't want to cooperate. All right, anyways, um, so I competed for Mount Hood Community College for two years. I did NPDA for about a year and a half of that. Um, I am as impartial as I can be, and I try to limit the scope to what's happening in the round. Um, uh, do your best to be you know, clear with resolutional analysis. Um, I believe that you know impacts are like imperative. Um, and make sure that I know what you're voting for. Um, all the critiques and uh, topicality, that's fine. Um, structure is the most important thing to me. And I think that, um, you know, as long as you're clear, um, you can go as quickly as you want to speed uh, for the debate to be educational. Other than that, I mean, it's up to you to tell me what the debate you want to have. And, and I can jump in with a quick synopsis of mine right after that, because that last sentence is very important as far as I'm concerned. Um, you tell me what I'm supposed to care about. You tell me what your best framing, what your best argumentation is. I try and be as much of a blank slate as possible and not imprint my wants or needs or biases. I'm open to any argument, any tactic, as long as you're being respectful, as long as you're not lying, anything along those lines. I will consider whatever you have to put out there uh, within that framework, within that context. But um, but yeah, and, and I echo the congratulations and uh, looking forward to a great final round. Thanks, gentlemen. Um, I, I have a lot of similar sentiments. So I debated as well, but it's been quite some time. I'd say about uh, eight years since I've debated, but that doesn't mean I don't know what's going on. Um, so I just want you to tell me why you win. Anything that you bring up should be warranted, and I really do care about the impacts as well. I don't protect personally against new information, so make sure that you call that out if you don't want that to be something that we are judging. Um, but otherwise, I think that we're all set. Um, so that means we're going to start um, with the affirmative team. All right. That is our seven-minute prime minister. Oh, uh, quick question. Do you guys prefer like roadmaps and thank yous um, on or off time? I don't know. I'm fine with um, off time. I don't know, judge, other judges. As long as it's concise, it, it's fine to go off time for that. Okay. Awesome. Cool. Um, all right, so uh, just quickly off time, a big blanket of thank yous to everybody in today's round, uh, to our judges for adjudicating, to our opponents to whom we're hitting again, and I'm really lucky too because it is a lot, it has been so much fun this tournament, and to my partner for being the rock to my role. Uh, just to quickly roadmap, I'm going to start with some resolutional analysis before moving into our case today. To begin time, we stand in firm affirmation of today's resolution that the U.S. federal government should substantially increase regulations on cryptocurrency. I think today that background and definitions are going to be very important because cryptocurrency is one of those things that, like, we all know exists but is a little bit tough to actually define. Um, so... Uh, before we get into that, uh, the U.S. federal government is as it is, the U.S. federal government, and substantially increase means to give either, um, to increase any regulations that currently exist, um, and uh, yeah, with that, I'm going to move into cryptocurrency. Um, I've grabbed a definition off of Nerd Wallet, but I'm going to particularly give some background, both for the clarification of everybody in the round, but especially our judges. So cryptocurrency is, and this is the definition from Nerd Wallet, um, a digital currency that can be used to buy goods, um, to buy goods or services, and uses strong cryptography to secure it, and is digitally mined. Um, to give a quick background on what cryptocurrency is, basically. Um, 
imagine your computer solving very complex math problems and um the reward for those math problems is cryptocurrency so um this mining uh this act of mining takes a lot of energy it takes uh, strong computers and everything but in the end you are given this digital currency in which to use for goods and services that um that take it um in the case of cryptocurrencies uh, they're also very, very, very secure. Um, they use technology in which to secure the transactions so that they're almost virtually non-traceable. Um, with that, this is clearly a policy round, but it's the affirmation stance that we don't have to give planned text. We're actually here to prove that this should be happen. So we're uh, so we're acting on a net benefit or net impact for the U.S. federal government in which to substantially increase. Uh, with that, we'll be moving into our case today. Our contention number one is environmental impact. Environmental impact. Our subpoint A comes from the Cambridge Bitcoin Electricity Index of 2021, where they where they note that Bitcoin mining, um, the current uh, the current rate at which we mine Bitcoin all across the world, is the annual carbon footprint of Argentina, as in the entire country of Argentina. Um, this is huge. This actually amounts to around 115 terawatt hours. For reference, when you buy electricity, that's in milliwatt hours. Um, so this is a huge scale of electricity and has a major um, environmental impact. Our subpoint B quantifies this. It's, uh, from the Oak Ridge Institute of 2018, they say that one US dollar of Bitcoin equals 17 megajoules, which is more than double of what it takes to physically mine actual currency, such as dollars, coins, etc. Um, from this, we can see that the environmental impact is huge. Uh, this is causing um, this is causing countries uh, that are substantially mining Bitcoin to offset this e-waste and this uh, electricity waste in a way that is unsustainable and is going to have huge environmental impacts if regulation does not come. Um, our second um, our second contention is accessibility. Accessibility. Our subpoint A talks about NFTs. Uh, to give a quick background, NFTs are basically, I give you cryptocurrency and you give me a license that says I own this piece of media. It tends to be art. This was popularized uh, particularly in the uh, Grammys. No, not the Grammys. Uh, this was popularized particularly with um, a figure being sold of Chadwick Boseman um, as an NFT itself. Um, so basically, the New York Times of April 2021 says that this is actually hurting many artists because this is causing people to take art and sell it as an NFT on, uh, without the rights to do so and is basically randomly giving out rights to individuals. This is hurting small businesses all across the world, but especially in the United States, where the arts accounts for so much of small business use. And especially in a pandemic, digital, uh, digital currency and uh, the digital forefront is everywhere. Everything. Uh, secondly, our subpoint B is brick and mortar stores. These brick and mortar stores are not benefiting from Bitcoin and neither are the people who shop at them. People who are unable to buy into this digital craze, be it for one reason or another, um, aren't able to actually use this in any substantial way outside of the internet. Um, you can't go to a Dollar General and use Bitcoin to pay for your groceries if you're... Um, if you're a poor individual. So because of this, uh, the brick and mortar aspect plays directly into accessibility. And for the American people, this is everything. This is, and this brings a, the greater impact for the US federal government. And our final and our final contention today is contention number three. Crypto is used for illegal activity. Crypto is used for illegal activity. Our subpoint A comes uh, from the Oxford Academic in a study that they published in April of 2019 that $76 billion of Bitcoin was involved in illegal activity in some way or another. Bitcoin's ability to uh, mask every transaction that it uses 
every cryptocurrency does this, um, it uh, shows that it's actually uh, very hard to track this illegal activity. And therefore, without regulation, illegal activity is abound. In fact, um, the Certified Financial Crime Institute published another report in December of 2020, which leads us to our subpoint B, that sex trafficking is the number one illegal activity that people use cryptocurrency for. People are being shipped off to become sex slaves for uh, people in countries. They're being abused. And this human rights violation is going unchecked without regulation coming to cryptocurrency. Um, it's clear that the impact is immense for those for the U.S. federal government. And uh it's for these reasons that they need to substantially increase these regulations on cryptocurrency for the reasons that, that the government has presented today. Um, we will move into flex questioning time. Do you concede the remainder of your time? Yeah, oh yeah. Okay. <clears throat> All right, uh, first proposition excuse me, first opposition flex time, two minutes, is um, my opponents and the judges ready? Phoenix, you ready? Okay, all right. All right, um, two minutes starting now. Um, so my first question to you today is, did you define blockchain technology underneath cryptocurrency or at all? Um, I feel like blockchain actually falls outside of the resolution, but is an implied definition um, when we uh, use when the definition text says is use strong cryptography to secure it. A uh, blockchain kind of exists as its own technology, um, and it itself um, isn't necessarily um, intrinsic to cryptocurrency. Really, uh, what part is is not all. Is not all cryptocurrencies secure through blockchain technology? No, not all cryptocurrency is. Can you give me any examples of cryptocurrencies not secured by blockchain? Yeah, a lot of smaller coins aren't actually secured by blockchain, um, such as I believe Litecoin isn't. Um, I want to say there are a lot of cryptocurrencies, but I believe Litecoin isn't. Okay, so in what way is Litecoin secure then? A uh, Litecoin is secure because of its actual um, uh, the cryptography used um, in it itself, um, yeah. as per our definition. Okay, but Litecoin is I, I trade actually, and Litecoin is a peer-to-peer -peer cryptocurrency. So I do. So that I believe is an actual example of blockchain technology securing this currency. Do you have any other examples of coins that are traded that don't use blockchain technology? Admittedly, no, I don't. There are a lot of cryptocurrency out there, so... Sure. Yeah. So I'm saying, does that, <clears throat> excuse me, does that mean today's discussion of cryptocurrency includes non-blockchain technology secured coins? Yeah, it can. Sure. And what did you define as a substantial increase? Um, is any increase at all. Okay. That is time. First opposition constructive speaker, eight minutes. Are the judges ready? Okay, uh, quick off time roadmap, pretty standard stuff. RA, um, harms, and then refutations. Eight minutes speech starting now. So for the resolution, I just want to repeat it again. The United States federal government should substantially increase regulations on cryptocurrencies. So therefore, I would like to argue that substantially increase has the, has not been defined, rather just simply the word increase. Because during flex time, my opponent argued that any increase counts as substantial increase. However, I would argue quite the opposite, that we need to see significant change in regulation as it stands in order to win, for them to win today's debate. Let's continue. Regulations itself was not defined, so I would simply like to just limit regulations to any federal body, because the USFG, as it stands, could theoretically override state institutions, but let's just talk about what the federal government's doing onto itself, rather than any potential overrides of local or state laws. All right, <clears throat> moving on. My opponent was given an opportunity to give examples of cryptocurrencies that aren't peer-to-peer, -peer, that aren't blockchain-secured. 
Um, as it stands, I don't believe any were provided, and therefore I would like to limit today's discussion to the common understanding of Bitcoin, of Bitcoin, excuse me, not Bitcoin, of cryptocurrencies. You saw how Bitcoin just slipped out, and the reason for that is Bitcoin is synonymous with most cryptocurrencies. Fair enough, there are others, uh, Dogecoin infamously from Elon Musk, um, garlic bread coins, the, the memes continue. But generally speaking, most cryptocurrencies are blockchain secure, especially the ones con under consideration for regulation. And therefore, I would like to argue they are indeed traceable, as I will provide a source for that in my harms, or excuse me, in my counter contentions. Bottom line is, my RA, the thing I want you to take away from my, my RA analysis is that cryptocurrencies are traceable and the ones that aren't traceable generally aren't being discussed as being regulated. Uh, I agree that today should be a pause debate, uh, and we can just simply discuss the, the status quo and the potential harms if we increase regulation. Let's move on to harms that can be created from uh, that can be created from regulated cryptocurrency. First of all. Regulation of cryptocurrency has a chilling effect on trading. This is according to the regulatory review, August 31st, 2020. So by regulating cryptocurrency, we're causing an actual harm in this by because by because less trading would lead to less overall movement and usage of the currencies in question. Furthermore, we can argue that regulatory determinations that cryptocurrencies are not necessarily currencies onto themselves, and bans on the trading or use and anti-money laundering and exchange regulation are associated with abnormal declines in global price and some models. One cannot simply reject the possibility that the regulation in question can lead to a complete cessation of trading. So not only could chilling occur, potential cessation of trading entirely could occur due to the entire nature of cryptocurrencies to begin with. Not so much that they are illegal or not, but rather because Rather, because the, the appeal of the currency initially was due to its supposedly anonymous nature. This is also this is according to the regular, also according to the regulatory review, same source. Furthermore, it's po furthermore, it's possible that by regulating it as a secure, because my opponent, I don't believe, has actually argued who would regulate it and to what extent. But I would argue that if we w were to regulate it as a security instead of a commodity, as it's currently being understood. We should rather, we would take away the advantage it could potentially have of being regulated as a utility. For example, utility Ethereum's Ether token, or ETH, is generally classified as a utility token precisely because it serves as a fuel for developers executing software on the Ethereum platform. This is according to Brookings, October 10th, 2020. So, therefore, if we are to regulate cryptocurrency as not a utility, we can therefore affect people who are using it as a utility and therefore cause people to not be able to continue these activities in, for example, the software development field I just gave. Let's go on to my uh, opponent's specific intentions. Environmental impact. Bitcoin man, they argue that Bitcoin mining has an annual carbon footprint of Argentina. They provided a source for this. However, I don't believe this argument should flow because the resolution is talking about the United States federal government. I'm not denying the potential environmental impact of crypto mining, but rather the fact that the U.S. government can't do anything about it. What regulation would stop mining? The entire idea where crypto comes from is mining through, is mining coins to begin with. And furthermore, not all coins have a cap on mining like Bitcoin does. Bitcoin has a finite supply, that's what gives it so much value, whereas a lot of other more quote-unquote meme cryptocurrencies, such as the aforementioned Dogecoin, does not have a cap on supply. So this provides the twofold counterintention. Firstly, how would we actually stop the mining? Because that's necessary for crypto to exist onto itself. If we were to attempt to stop it, how would the U.S. federal government do so? And finally, there, because there isn't a supply cap on it, similar to the way, unlike, say, a mining actual currency, um, and my opponent has not really made clear what they meant by the cost of a megajoule being mining actual currency, because it's finds more we don't mine actual currency, we take metals and mint them, but if that's what they meant, that's that's fine, but the point stands though. Well, how would we go about doing this for crypto? Next, they argue accessibility, that art is being used for crypto trading. However, I would argue this is a non-unique argument because art is already art this idea is not novel. This 
I was already being traded for, well, money, the traditional form of currency. So I don't see how crypto is a unique argument in this sense. Let's carry on. Brick and mortars can't use. The poor can't use this. Now, I don't know if I qualify quite as poor, but I am in a community college, but and, and I'm paying for, for a good reason here. And so I dare say I can't trade in crypto. I, in fact, have an app on this. I put in a dollar and I was able to buy and sell crypto. So I don't believe the argument that the poor can't access crypto flows simply because anyone can access crypto trading. Furthermore, Brick and mortar stores currently do not use crypto, not because they're unable to, because they choose not to. In fact, if we're going to go brick and mortar, it's not mom and pop shop. Tesla has actually, on record, offered to take crypto in for purchasing one of the cars. Furthermore, their last contention is crypto is used for legal activity, according to the Oxford Academic Journal, and it masks transactions. But as I noted in my resolution analysis, it was very important to me point out that as it stands, cryptos that we're discussing will be regulated are traceable because they are secured by blockchain technology. For example, uh, we can look at how, where did the source go? Uh, here somewhere. <clears throat> the Fifth Circuit ruled that we don't need a warrant in order to obtain financial transaction data, which was obtained from cryptocurrency exchanges. This was by the Electronic Frontier Foundation, December 21st, 2020. Furthermore, as my opponent did not know who was regulating it, I would like to note that we are regulating it already under the FTC. As it stands, cryptos are classified as a commodity rather than as a currency. That's why the SEC is not regulating it and moving, considering moving on to it. But as it stands, though, the FTC already regulates it. And in fact, there are already proposals in place for, fin, uh, for the Financial Center of Economic... I think the end, but... That institution to lower the trade hedge threshold, which institutions must collect data and store transaction data from 3,150, which means that as it stands, cryptos are being regulated already. Uh, open the flex time. Awesome. Wait. Oh, that's your flex time. Yeah, sorry, go ahead. Yes. Yeah, Carry no worry. Um, I'll just start flex time now. Um, so, uh, I do have just a couple of questions. Um, the uh, the biggest thing that I have here is the uh, the chill on trade. I believe was the wording that you used. Um, so, uh, did regulation on stocks uh, cause trading to drop? Yes. Can you like prove that? The Great Depression. Before the Great Depression, we lacked the type of regulation and financial institutions which secured trading and due to the volatility of the stock market was one of the direct causes of the Great Depression. I'm not arguing that whether that or not the currency is volatile. Market. Should I finish answering your first question or did you want me to answer this question? Uh, just answer this one. Would you say okay. that cryptocurrency is volatile? To the extreme. Okay. Um, awesome. So um, you also say that brick and mortar stores choose not to use cryptocurrency. Um, can you substantiate this? I'm not sure like where this where this idea of this choice comes from. Simply because I provided the obvious evidence that we can actually use crypto as it stands as currency if we wish to. You uh, what evidence provided examples that? of how people pardon? What evidence was that? I, I must have missed it. You you gave examples of how crypto is used for transactions. I believe that wouldn't that show I should ask you a question. Wouldn't that show that crypto is indeed used in transactions? That's a question. Excuse me. Crypto is shown to be used in transactions. Ergo, businesses can choose to accept crypto as currency. Oh, okay, okay. I see what you mean. Um, I actually have no further questions. All oh, right, that's eight minute member of government. Yes, that is me. Um, so really quick off time, is everyone ready? Perfect. So before I get started today, since this is my um, first and really only time speaking today, I would like to thank everyone for being here today. Congratulations on our fellow finalists for making it here today. Without you, we would just be uh, yelling at nothing. Um, so this is making a lot more entertaining. Thank you for our judges for coming in, of course, and also um, giving us this experience and being able to facilitate this so we can have this educational discussion. Uh, the general format of my speech today is I'm going to go ahead and talk about some of the points made by the opposition today. I'm just going to go 
um, top down. And then I'm going to come back to uh, the government's case and go once again top down and talk about some of the rebuttals that were talked about. And I will be starting my time right now. Um, I would like to start by going over the case of the opposition today. I'm really sorry if I do miss anything. I'm sure that my partner will pick up anything I miss. Um, their flow was kind of messy, so I wasn't sure where contention started and ended. Uh, so I'm going to do the best I can. Um, the main thing that they talked about, how there will be less trading if we introduce regulations on cryptocurrency. However, that is simply not true. As we have already said today, that if we have more regulations on cryptocurrency, we are able to bring cryptocurrencies to brick and mortar stores and to more physical locations. They said that the existence of transactions while using cryptocurrency is proof enough that brick and mortar stores are capable of taking these transactions, which is simply not true. Cryptocurrency doesn't work like a debit or a credit card where you can just slide it in the card reader and it's good to go. You need special technology for that or specific software in order to get to that point. And not every brick and mortar store, especially mom and pop shops, are not prepared to make this kind of change in their shops. Some are still struggling to keep up with simple credit and uh, debit card transactions. So this lack of trade um, um, is simply not true when we bring in the context of um brick and mortar stores. And another point I would also like to elaborate on, less trade with cryptocurrency would not necessarily be a bad thing if we're also limiting criminal activity, which was a huge point of the government today. So yes, some trade might be halted, but a lot of that will be at the end of the day, illegal activity, as we have already provided statistics showing how much of uh, cryptocurrency is used towards that. Uh, their second point was talking about, um, um, yeah, that's all I really had to say. And they were also talking about the blockchain. Um, my partner is going to elaborate a little bit more on that. However, um, blockchain technology, the point of that being established is because of anonymity. The goal of cryptocurrency is to stay as anonymous as humanly possible. And that's why it's so popular among um, illegal markets or people who just don't want the government to be all in their business. So that is a huge point I would also like to bring to uh, today's debate. I'm going to go back to the government side for um, today and talk about some of the rebuttals that were made. Uh, the first one was environmental impact. And I would like to just clarify real quick. If it, I'm sorry if it was unclear. They said that the Argentine, uh, our fact about Argentina was not topical. We were just using Argentina as a way to quantify the amount of electricity that was being used. So it's still relevant to today's debate when we're still talking about the United States, since we were just using Argentina as a way to quantify the amount of electricity being used. Um, so this statistic still holds up on today's debate. And they also talked about um, the megajoules conversion, but they also talked about how um, physical money is not uh, mined, but proceeded to say that money is made out of metal. Metal is mined physically, and it's not the job of the government today to prove how you know physical currency is made since we're talking about cryptocurrency. I would like to go on to our second contention today, which was accessibility. They talked about how NFTs um, are non-unique um, non to this case because art is already being traded for physical currency, but they missed a major part about our um, sub point A today, which was the fact that art is being stolen from st um, small artists and small businesses in order to be sold. We are not seeing that people are taking the physical Mona Lisa and selling it as their own art. We know that physical art has a little bit more regulation on this, and that is exactly why this would benefit small artists who are looking to sell their artwork and share it with the world. With NFTs hurting small businesses, I think they missed a huge point of our sub point A, and I would like to just bring that up again. And our sub point B was brick and mortar stores. I already kind of talked about this in the rebuttal for the opposition today. But once again, they said that they chose not to, and Tesla was their only example of being able to take this form of currency. But there are plenty of other businesses that do not take cryptocurrency at this point. Um, mom and pop shops, for the most part, do not have access, um, access to that kind of technology. We can also see that most grocery stores that we visit on a daily basis do not have, hey, we accept Discover, MasterCard, and Bitcoin. Um, that is simply not the reality. Just because one um, physical brick and mortar location does, does not mean that that is the common um, practice right now. And then our third contention was that it is used for legal activity, which I think is the most important part of our debate today when it comes to the government's case. We have stated that there are $76 billion of Bitcoin and related currency used in illegal activity. If we are halting this trade of illegal activity, that would be a huge benefit for the U.S. federal government and the citizens living in the United States and really all over the world. 
if we are halting trade of illegal activity, that would be a benefit in itself. Yes, it is a halt of trade, but it's a halt of trade that is necessary for the benefit of the majority. And we can also see that, uh, um, as mentioned by my partner earlier, sex trafficking is one of these high crimes that are mentioned through Bitcoin, um, Bitcoin and cryptocurrency trade. This is, once again, a huge impact when we're seeing that you know regulation on this would be able to bring these criminals to justice and get justice for the people who are affected by this criminal activity due to these reasons today i urge for a, a government ballot on today's debate because at the end of the day the um we have shown that there are so many benefits to increased regulation uh one more thing i would also like to bring in just because it kind of came up at the um end of the oppositions as they talked about definitions and how we have to include substantiate but we did include um um any uh, regulation increase would count as a substantial increase as per the definitions of the government presented today. Um, and so we did consider that any kind of regulation is more than what we have now, which would be substantial. Um, so to these reasons today, I urge for a government ballot on today's debate and thank you. We would like to use our one minute flex to gather our thoughts, give the judges a breather. We'll start our time now. Give everyone a breather. And that ends our flex. Okay. Just real quick off time, I would also like to thank the judges and our opponents. This is the third time and third day we've seen each other. So really glad we're actually switching sides this time. And thank you to the judges and to my partner because I could not have done this without you. We will begin our time. So fundamentally, we have a big disagreement here especially within our defining and our RAs. The opposition here is saying that the any increase is substantial, but that's still too loose of a definition to say that any increase is a substantial increase. It's not been quantified. For the, that reason, judges, you just can't use that argument to flow across. Further, when we were going into the secure payment, they were mentioning smaller coins that aren't, but again, our, our contention is that the blockchain is secure and that most coins are using blockchain. They're trying to go for a cherry picked example that just doesn't flow through. And for that traceable argument that they were making, it is traceable, especially Bitcoin. And that kind of just refutes their entire contention three that they're saying illegal activity is untraceable because the FBI was able to prosecute and catch Ross Albright, the dread pirate Roberts, the infamous Silk Road's owner from his Bitcoin wallet. The only way they tracked that criminal was by seeing that the chat messages where he told another criminal that he was going to pay them for a hit. They found that. They found it lined up with his Bitcoin wallet because you can trace people's Bitcoin wallets the second you know they own that wallet. Again, it's traceable. Cryptocurrency is traceable. Their other point, environmental impact, it's still not a unique argument. And saying that Argentina is a model or that it qualifies, Argentina is not the US. Argentina is in a completely different region. You don't have the same things and it doesn't translate. And their argument about it being like fossil fuels, that's not unique. There's cars, there's other things. It's not a unique argument to be saying that there's an environmental impact. And we really don't wanna go off topicality and start discussing fossil fuels here. Onto their second point, their NFT point, they completely dropped that in our cross-examination, unfortunately. They said that blockchain falls outside the whole definition, but, Every part of an NFT, a non-fungible transaction, is 
on the blockchain. That is how you get those arts, is they are stored on the blockchain. And they, the opposition has argued that blockchain falls outside of the definitions of our round. So therefore their entire second contention falls outside the definitions of this round because NFTs are inherently on the blockchain that they said is outside the round. Their concession alone makes sure judge that that point does not flow through. And again, NFTs are not currency and our discussion is about Bitcoin or not Bitcoin. Our discussion is about cryptocurrency and NFTs are not cryptocurrency. They're stored on the blockchain. You might see a relation, but it's not the same. That's not topicality, that's out. And the art stolen argument, again, we respectfully disagree. It's not a unique argument. You have heard so many cases throughout years and years of even though there's higher physical security, someone talks to the guard, looks like a police officer, they get in through the back and they steal art. That's not unique. That's not unique to cryptocurrency. That's just not a good argument for that. And we respectfully ask the judges to completely drop that side from the the opposition's case because it just does not flow through similarly the illegal activity as we've gone over when we just brought up ross Ulbright and the dread private robert situation it is traceable but you know what isn't traceable cash and they haven't mentioned any other illegal activity that happens cash is the most untraceable quantity ever a lot of scammers phone call scammers that scam our elderly individuals which is very unfortunate they start telling with their tech support scam to tell them, hey, you can go buy a Walmart gift card with your cash. That's untraceable. That's truly untraceable. They're purchasing with cash, not like the Bitcoin and cryptocurrency linkage. This is untraceable. That is money that goes away. Their illegal activity argument does not flow through. And the sex slaves argument, although that is a very powerful thing to say, it is not unique to cryptocurrency again. That was happening long before we had these uh, these cryptocurrencies and it unfortunately it is still persisting. Regulating the cryptocurrency market does not solve this issue. Unfortunate as that may be, and both we both agree that that is a terrible thing, but it's also non-topical, it's not unique. Going on to our case, there are some very important distinctions here that we need to be making actually. When we discuss that trading is impacted, Regulation to the stock market industry inherently has ruined certain stocks. I would like to remind the judges of Robinhood, you know, that whole game of Redditors are now starting to raise up the stock price. Immediately, Robinhood pulled out. The stock price went from 438, according to Forbes, February 18th, 2021, down to 40 bucks. Regulation is bad. If you can go from having 400 bucks of your, of your investment down to 40, you just lost 10 times of what you had. Everything is gone in a second. And that's our stock market. And our stock market is regulated arguably more than our cryptocurrency and our crypto market. And we're trying to say that the crypto market should be increased. Again, when you invest, you're basically saying that money is free to the market. We let them do what it's going to do. You should not, uh, judges, you should not be voting for the affirmative. You should be voting for the negation, clearly because we have proven as on the tin of our resolution, that the US federal government should not substantially increase regulations on cryptocurrency because it is inherently harmful and the benefits that the, um, that the opposition has brought up just don't track, they don't flow through. One, from their own admission that it's not a valid part of the debate with blockchain, NFTs don't flow through. Their environmental impact is not a unique argument. Again, that's happened before, it happens after. And their illegal activity argument is also not unique because that's happened before and it happened again remind you of the gift cards example. We stand firmly that you should not regulate it because of, I just want to remind the judges, because of money, money being used. Crypto is not mainly used for illegal activities. The Fifth Circuit, again, going into our traceable argument, the Fifth Circuit decided that law enforcement does not need to get a warrant in order to obtain financial transaction data from cryptocurrency exchanges, according to the Electronic Frontier Foundation, December 21st, 2020. Again, I had already mentioned that the Dread Pirate Roberts, Ross Ulbright scandal, the owner of the infamous black market Silk Road was caught by his Bitcoin wallet. Now you have further confirmation from a different source from the Electronic Frontier Foundation and the Fifth Circuit of our government saying that you can track it. So again, their third contention completely falls flat. You can track it. Illegal activity has gone on, so it's not a unique argument. And that's the only way you know about that 67 or 76 billion is because you had to have been able to track that that much went missing. With cash, you can't track how much is missing or how much is gotten. 
it's very loose. Cash is more of a problem than um, cryptocurrency. <clears throat> and for these main reasons, Judge, you should really side with the negation. My partner will go into much more than I have because I'm running short on time now, but you really have to look at the opposition's arguments and how thoroughly they have been refuted by our side. How even by their own admissions, some of their arguments are not topical to the debate. Even if you reject me saying that the other arguments are not topical, they themselves said that blockchain is not a part of this. It, it falls outside the whole definition and non-fungible non -fungible tokens are a part of blockchain. They are not a cryptocurrency. Again, their second point of contention just falls flat. Thank you, judges. And I really urge you to don't add regulation. Don't get the government involved. Thank you. Okay. Uh, final opposition uh, speech, four minutes. Are my opponents ready? Are the judges ready? Ready. Fantastic. Okay. Uh, time starts. Oh, but <laughs> let's do some off times. Off time roadmaps first. Um, I'm going to go ahead. Oh, I think oh, I've been using the wrong mic the whole time. I'm, so, I'm sorry if I sounded terrible. It's been using my default webcam camera. Ahem. Right. Off time roadmap here. Uh, again, just going to reinforce RA. Going to go into harms and then go back to uh, the government's uh, contentions. Starting time now. Okay, so. For the RA, I'm going to be brief, just double down on what my opponent said. Any classification does not equal substantial. Substantial means change, substantial change. And I would like to qualify that by saying either one, we should classify crypto differently as a utility, as a currency, whatever, or seriously change how much we demand of regulating crypto as it stands. Let's go on to the actual harms of potentially doing this. Firstly, they did not refute my disadvantage about arguing how perhaps crypto should be regulated as a utility if it was to be regulated at all. And how if this wasn't done so, as in if we regulate it as a non-utility, it could hurt platforms such as software developers. My third harm was that uh, there is the potential risk of cessation of trading. Crypto is different from money. Society as it stands does not run on crypto yet. So that's why if we regulate crypto, then we might actually see the cessation of trade in certain places. And my opponents have not refuted this idea. And again, my first harm was noting how it could have a chilling effect and therefore hurt, hurt people from their ability to trade in the first place. Because people like myself who do trade in crypto may not be able to do so under substantially different regulations. Now, moving on to their counter, moving on to their contentions and my counter counter contentions. They've argued that there is an environmental impact to crypto. We pointed out that this is not unique. There are plenty of other activities that would harm the environment. And even if we were to attempt to regulate crypto, I don't see if any plan set forward where we could reduce the amount of mining that occurs for crypto. If crypto is to retain value, it will be mined for. And I don't see if any regulation that could see, stop people from mining, people are paying for this electricity after all. The environmental impact could perhaps be argued to have some sort of, I don't know, carbon tax, but that's not substantial. That's in line with many other types of regulations on the books at the stands. Furthermore, they've argued access accessibility as an issue. May I point out how many YouTubers get DMCA'd as a stance for the minor, for, for minor stock, for minor photos? If crypto becomes more mainstream, if we actually start seeing more crypto, it's not a unique argument that somehow crypto is uniquely placed to steal art. And again, this will require blockchain technology. So either my opponents can see the idea we're only talking about blockchain crypto or we're talking about non-blockchain crypto, which is not used, especially for something as important as art. Moving on, my opponents have argued that wallets are not free for some reason, that we can't go ahead and just give everyone a wallet, that there's a fee involved. In fact, may I remind you, American Express is not accepted at most grocery stores because they charge more in fees. In fact, if you look back to the history of credit card transactions themselves, it took a long time for them to be adopted. So it might take a while for crypto to become adopted as a normal currency, but there's actually no fees involved with wallets. Uh, we run a small business ourselves, we accept crypto, and there's no reason people cannot. So just because people aren't doing so is not proof that they are unable to. 
Furthermore, they've argued criminal activity as a major point of contention. But again, as my opponent, as my partner noted, money is also used for criminal activities. And crypto by no means is mainly used for criminal activities. Because as far as I'm aware, my Dogecoin is just sitting in my wallet. Now, that being said, my, opponent, my partner has also pointed out how crypto is actually better suited to catching criminals than money is. Because when you look to wallets, they are traceable. And we've provided evidence of a very famous, or infamous case rather, of a gentleman who was caught, gentleman, terrible person, caught using crypto. And money laundering is actually easy to do because there is not traceability. That's the entire premise of money laundering. And that's why I believe through the current status quo, you should stick with no regulation today. Thank you very much. Uh, open to flex time when uh, you are. Uh, Phoenix, you are right with conceding flex. Yeah, that works for me. Cool. Uh, then we'll just go right into the five minute prime minister speech. Um, everybody ready? Radical. This is the last time we'll be speaking. So again, a blanket of thank yous to everybody who came around for today. Thank you to anybody watching on the live stream that this is apparently being streamed on. That's pretty friggin' rad. Uh, thank you to our judges for adjudicating today's round. Without you guys, this would be a really weird experience. Um, and thank you to our opponents. This is the third time we've hit you guys. And honestly, it's been a lot of fun. I hope to see you more in the circuit. Um, uh, just to continue, um, for a quick roadmap, I'm going to go over some final rebuttal before offering some voters for our judges today. Uh, to begin time now, um, I'm going to start with uh, some rebuttals against the rebuttal that my uh, member of uh, government did not cover. Um, there is a lot here, and again, it's a little messy because we're missing a little bit of signposting. So I'm going to cover what I can um, in the four minutes I've got. So let's rock and roll. Um First, they want to say that our env environmental impacts is non-unique and that uh, there are a lot of things that impact the environment and et cetera. However, um, in, the first, uh, in the first opposition speech, they said that they did not deny that there was environmental impact for uh, cryptocurrency. Therefore, this argument flows no matter what because the uh, opposition has clearly conceded it already. And I want to clarify our use of Argentina. This isn't that cryptocurrency mining is happening in Argentina. It's that it's equivalent to the electricity use of the entire country of Ar Argentina. It's not about Argentina itself. It's used as a comparative. I just wanted to make that clear because it seems like it got a little bit muddy uh, because uh, our, the opposition kept saying that Argentina doesn't affect the U.S., and that's totally true, uh, but we're using it as a comparative, not as in mining is happening in Argentina. Um, and again, um, the megajoules argument, uh, like my like my member of government said, uh, you have to mine physical, um, you have to mine physical metals, you have to mint those metals. We're talking about the electricity use of that. Um, again, just for clarification for the judges' purposes. Um, and, and on our accessibility, and I want to talk about blockchain. The reason my member of government didn't cover it is because the member of government legitimately just doesn't really know a lot about blockchain. However, I'm a software engineer myself, and um, I personally have used blockchain in... Um, uh, in projects myself. Blockchain's entire ideal is that blockchain is secure. Blockchain is a way to mark mark different paths between different transactions. However, the whole point of them and the reason we call it cryptocurrency is because those particular paths are cryptography locked, meaning you basically have to know the answer to a math problem without knowing the math problem itself. That's what cryptography basically is. So every path of this blockchain is locked. Um, and like I said, I've personally used blockchain. So this technology actually, their points about blockchain flow to the government because its security makes it more difficult to trace. Um, their entire point that blockchain um, is the reason why they could track these uh, individuals down is not true. They said they found him through text messages. They would have never found out that this was happening otherwise just based on blockchain technology. So this argument does not flow. Additionally, on our NFT argument, we're not talking about the active NFTs themselves, the non-fungible tokens. We're talking about the trading of cryptocurrency itself for stolen art. That's how we keep it topical. And um, 
the uh, opposition hasn't even covered that at all. Um, and again, the brick and mortar thing, there, the opposition's was a personal example. I can't argue with your experience, but by and large, brick and mortar stores do not accept cryptocurrency. And um, our argument about um, illegal activity was just basically said, well, money's used for illegal activity too. Uh, that's non unique in of itself. Cryptocurrency itself, because of its security, is especially good for illegal activity. And that's why we need this regulation. For some quick voters, judges, the main voter today is impact. Um, our weighing mechanism was accepted, was accepted by um, the opposition, and that was net impact. Judge, they have offered zero impact for the US federal government, our main actor today. They've offered impact for trade, and this trade isn't even verifiably provable. They use the um they use the example of the Great Depression, but judges, this is just substantially not true. The Great Depression happened because of volatility in the uh, in Wall Street, which they even quantified with the example of Robin Hood, with a, where a four hundred dollar investment dropped to forty dollars. That's not because of regulation. That's because of volatility. And and uh, by the opposition's admission, this volatility is to the extreme with cryptocurrency. That means it needs more regulation, just like Wall Street does. Um, so the greater impacts here are threefold. The environmental impact, the accessibility impact, and the illegal activity impact. Judges, if you're voting, if you're voting for the opposition today, um, you're voting for the lesser impact for the US federal government. Um, and uh, we've offered clearer impacts and that is our main voter today. It's for these reasons that I'm standing in firm affirmation of today's resolution. We're done! Congratulations, everyone. Thank you for your time. Um, I know we're right about time at the next round, so I don't know if anybody else has to jump, but um, good luck to you today. All right. Thank you so much. Thanks. Bye. Good luck and good job, everyone. Have a great day.